I have heard so many things about what you have been engaged with in your past that brought you to the point you are today in, in your, your fight in, in this, you know, freedom movement or whatever. And I would like for, you know, the folks that may not know you that are kind of new to you that are joining my call tonight, I'd, li I'd like for you to, to uh, you know, just kind of bring us up to date on what you have done, what, what your experiences are, you know, uh, and what brought you to the point you're at today. Well, I started out in sociology, and I, I got degreed, which are bullshit degrees. Um, everybody needs to realize this now because we're all indoctrinated. Um, I went into psychology. I got some bullshit degrees in psychology. Um, I have a doctoral or PhD in, in metaphysics. Um, I, I have degrees in, in political science. And again, they're all bullshit degrees because we're all indoctrinated. But at some point uh, throughout everything, you, I realized exactly what's going on. And, and so we started um, writing to obliterate the writing or, or the the fencing mechanism, the psychological fences that are around us at this time, and um, so far so good. I mean, uh, uh, we've, we've all been through a lot, and it takes a lot to get to the point where you realize that um, what you're patriotic to is not something that's protecting you, but it's something that's pr preying on you. And, and um, you know, I, I really, I don't like to um, associate myself anymore with any of the titles because um, like I said, when I went through the um, sociology, I had no clue. I was still in the system. I was still playing the system's game. I was still, um, you know, looking at statutory law and thinking it was a good thing. Um, again, with psychology, I thought, well, you know, um, that was a good thing. And, and it's actually what what binds us. Um, that's what Babylonian theory is. It's a, it's a use of psychology and creation of culture and language and, and patriotism to something that's preying on you. And um, really, it wasn't until um, I've been doing this about 12 years, um, but it wasn't until about five years ago or so when everything started clicking. And I didn't start writing until about two years ago. And since then, we've been able to facilitate the indictments, uh, facilitate the voids, uh, facilitate everything that we need. We're just now doing the writs of execution and writs of uh, air ashes. Um, <laughs> What we want to do is we want to get back to being. Um, what we've realized now is um, each time, I mean, we're bought and sold, we're traded, we're negotiated, everybody realizes this now, but it goes so deep. And um, when, when we're held in, in, a, in the action of a taint, we're being held in a taint for various reasons, and one of them is felony. We're, we're considered felons. And we knew this, but for the longest time, I couldn't find how they're continuing this or, or how they're doing this. You know, besides the um, Sister Kim Act, there has to be some kind of cause. Well, then we were looking around at posting. Um, so you have an address. In the beginning, um, I was involved in child advocacy, and then I realized, um, well, that was, I realized quite quickly that men are falsely accused of numerous things and at that time I was just assuming that it, you know damn females you know and I, and I was blaming these females and, and not the, the original culprit which is feminism itself so I did a lot of work in anti-misandry and um, men's rights so I started out in child advocacy and quickly I went into men's rights and father's rights anti-misandry um, you name it because of the what was going on and, and still I didn't realize that it was not so much the females that were involved in these cases, something was making, their behavior was reactionary. So something was pushing them into doing what they were doing. And, and so I started studying more into the action of feminism, more into the actions of masculism, um, more into politics. And, and at that time, I, you know, that's when I had the sociology and psychology degrees. I didn't, I didn't like politics. Um, so when I finally went into the politics of the game, that, that's when I realized why men are, are vilified, why they are falsely accused, why they are subjugated. And it, and it is the um, metaphor, the biblical metaphor of removing all the first one sons. In order to, um, for anything or any entity to prey on a society, they have to remove the male. Otherwise, the male would stand up and protect the society. That's, that's your instinct. And um, what you've been taught now is different than instinct. You've been taught chivalry. 
And so what that means is that you can have um, a female that's not really a female. Uh, she's a male-minded female with um, usually more testosterone than you have because she's a social creation. Um, she's got, fully loaded with norepinephrine as well as having low impulse control, which is a female trait anyway, a natural female uh, trait. And you're being garnered by that female playing the victim, and you believe she's female, and so you run in there to save her, like a knight in shining armor. And, and I've got that, that article somewhere. I wrote it years ago. Um, but in, an, in any other biology, no other biology does that. You can't, you know, there there would never in, in any other biology be a herd of, of um, animals walking by a female that's crying because she broke a nail, nobody would stop, you know, or her hair hurts or whatever else, or, or whining about cramps or whatever else. You're not going to stop because it's at the detriment of the herd to do that. No other biology is chivalrous. It's, it's instinct for you to protect, but chivalry is taught to you. It's a social mechanism and it's social engineering. And so when you realize what you've been doing and you... All this time you've been saving that female. I'm a victim of child abuse or I'm a victim of, of spousal abuse. Well, you run in there and you're the one that's helping to falsely accuse the other guy when she wants to get out of the relationship. And, and that's, that's what the human ease is. She's, she's adhering to social engineering. It's just so simple for her to walk away now with the children. And you help her do that because then your instinct kicks in on top of chivalry. That's how you're able to be falsely accused and you have no clue. You know, so, so we're repeating these cyclical patterns, and it's over and over and over and over again, and, and, and then you're going to be false seekers. This well, is politics. It would, it, would, it would appear as though, you know, you, you become kind of sensitive to the, to the men's side of things on, on a lot of this, uh, these issues in, in court. Uh, well, no, you not... Feel, you feel a lot also, of the, okay, but also the female's too. perspective. You know, we have this whole whole implementation of feminism. This is this is the dyke female speaking on my behalf. She is not a natural female. She's speaking on my behalf, so she's taking my voice by being the financial louder entity. Financially, she's louder than I am because um, she's less than I am. There's less fem- um, dyke females than are, there are natural females, but her voice is the one that's federally funded. She's the one you hear well, in the media. Yeah, she's you, the one. You, you're already going. You're already going um, like, like pretty, pretty deep into the whole idea of all this. And um, I was, I was hoping to get a little more insight. At, you know, as you know, kind of more right. to who you keep, are, you know, and how you got into this, and uh, right. and kind of get a ground, a groundwork for that. Right. See where <laughs> you've gone from this, and how and how you gained the knowledge that you have over this time, um, and you know, yeah, we, I, I would like for everyone to understand, you know, your perspective from where you're coming from, because, you know, I, I've seen a lot of the things that you've done over time. Obviously, uh, recently you you have you know been in, in, in depth with a lot of a lot of different things, uh, law wise, legal wise, or whatever, and. Um, I just, I just think uh, b- before we get into that, uh, mm-hmm. I, I would like, I would like people to kind of get to know you a little bit more. Uh, as why you, why you chose the path, you know, you you you've been following it. You've been helping a lot of people, and and I think it's very important. You know, and it's wonderful okay. that you have, but I do think it's important that people understand. You know, it's kind of the why. I, I would like to have. Your story, you know, as, right. as as just as the night goes on, and we understand a little about you, why, and how you come up with the, this knowledge that you have. It's it's really wonderful. Right. Well, that was the path that I was on, um, and I just I've been. I think what you want is I've been following the path of the truth. So each time um, I'm presented with something else, here here we're presented with Miss um, Andre. So I. You have to get behind it and see why why it's there. You know, what is the, the action that causes this reaction? Why is there misandry? Why is there feminism? Why why was there, is there speak of, of masculinism at one point in time, um, whatever else? So when I pass, well, I, I, I just, I, I, under, I, I seem to follow the, fem- the truth. I, I understand that the feminist movement was actually created by the Rothschilds group 
in order in order to cause you know breakups of the families to where we could get the women into the workforce, we could get the children into the indoctrination system, and right. you know, the Hitler and Youth, and that, right? And that was created all the way back at the French Revolution in 1789, 1798. Um, that was the first model of feminism, and then it came forward, and that's what um, Hitler was doing. Hitler, they had already broke up the family. They had already torn everything apart, and that's what low intensity conflict is, and that's how you, how they um, indoctrinated the Hitler Youth. You know, once you have them in public schools, then it's all over from there. You have children that inform on you, and and everything else. But okay, well, the, it's it's important, I think, to point out at this point in time that the information that that you're bringing forward then uh, is is basic. History, the knowledge that we already have from our own history. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Not, not actually being applied to our common sense today. Absolutely. And that, that's the only path that I've followed is the truth. So if I'm presented with something that's a consensus reality or, or something that's not true, well, then I'm going to dispel it. I'm going to go find the truth. And, and that's what my path has lead me, led me to. And and here we are. Here here we are, what I'm writing now, the voids and and everything else, but I only follow the Word of God, which um, I am grounded in the Word of God. I don't go outside of the Word of God, and, and um, there's no other option for me. When I started indicting um, the sheriff in Washington State, I'm from Stevens County, uh, north of Spokane, Washington. When I started going up against the sheriff, um, he was working with our own family attorney, our own family lawyer, attorney, whatever, and um, I had no clue at that time um, how close-knit things were. I was raised by a 32nd-degree uh, Mason Scottish Rite. And um, so, you know, I grew up thinking that, you know, I was untouchable. And um, so we come along, and our family attorney, uh, after my grandfather dies, he was the 32nd Rite. Uh, the attorney came in to sneak the inheritance. And so my grandmother, in 2003, uh, she was murdered. They, they said it was a suicide. She was found by a cop, um, or supposedly by a cop. She had Parkinson's. Uh, she was four foot nine. They said she shot herself in the head with the 357 Magnum. Um, her daughter, my mother, I wasn't raised by my... my uh, Parents. I was raised by my grandparents because uh, my mother was one of the feminists. She was a dyke. She doesn't like children. She doesn't like men. Uh, period. She likes the title that comes with having children. And, um, so I started indicting our our uh, sheriff, and then I started realizing what what Rick was doing. Rick Kimbrough. He was, you know, complicit in the murder of my grandparents in order to take. Uh, whatever was left of the state of the family. And um, this is allowed because that, that's what feminism does. It entitles her, the female, so that she redistributes every last penny of everything. That's her function. So after I indicted um, Thayer, I, I had stupidly gone to uh, the FBI. I, I didn't know that how involved they were in everything. And, and um, finally in 2010... Um, we were working with uh, Nancy Schaefer, Schaefer and Bill Bowen. And um, Nancy Schaefer comes up murdered uh, April 24th. <clears throat> and um, I never advertised in my backyard, but when I got a doctor, uh, he had come to my property with an RV. He said he was falsely accusing me to my help. Well, I've been doing false allegations for, for years and years, and and dealing with men who were falsely accused, so I didn't think anything of it. And um, two weeks later, he was beating my head in and, and um, foaming at the mouth. As he was apologizing to me for my death, he was telling me, I, you were such a good woman. You were such a good friend. And at that time, um, again, I was stupid. I called the sheriff, which is their function. They're the ones that had sent him out. And... Um, so they come out and pretend to look for him for a couple hours. They don't find him, of course. And then I asked the sheriff 
as a as single mom, I asked the sheriff to walk to the house with me and make sure all the doors and windows were locked. And then the sheriff leaves, and about an hour later, I had all the lights off, and I was pretending to sleep, and here he comes breaking in again. He's cutting the windows, uh, the screens off of my windows, and um, I specifically remember walking into the uh, master bed- bathroom there um, with the sheriff while he unlocked the window, but I thought he had locked it. But the guy comes crawling in my my bathroom window, which was unlocked for him to do so. And um, the sheriff at the time, I was on the phone with with, uh, dispatch the whole time he was breaking into my home um, in order to kill me. And the sheriff was telling me, well, we're walking in because we don't want him to know we're here. So, you know, they're trying to take as long as they can so that I can be murdered. And um, when he hit the bedroom door, finally they they showed up. But um, a couple minutes more, and I don't think that, I would be here talking to you because the sheriff uh, was trying to make sure that uh, he got me. I don't know what they said to him. He was a good man. I do not believe that he's a violent individual any other time because of the rage he was in. He had been on the phone prior prior to the first attack. And um, again, he was foaming at the mouth in rage. But he was apologizing to me for my death or the death he saw. So... Um, I'm only to assume that they told him that he better do that or else or whatever. I, I don't know. Um, he's a, a good person. They had, they had brought in and falsely accused him of drug use when he was a foot surgeon. And um, they pulled his medical license because he wasn't getting people addicted to OxyContin. He would write out prescriptions for five days instead of 30, and then they were warning him. They kept t- threatening to take away his funding, uh, Medicaid and Medicare, everything else, and he wouldn't listen to the threats. You know, as a doctor, he did not want to uh, create addiction. And finally, they falsely accused him of of running a a drug ring in uh, uh, Colville. And um, so we go along, and I stayed at the house after this because he was in jail. The prosecuting attorney automatically, under the Violence Against Women Act, uh, puts out a two-year restraining order. I didn't go to these courts. I don't enter into courts, and um, which guarantees that he's pissed off at me. Uh, that's how they facilitate the anger um, they allow to fester. Now he can't have a job. He's not going to get a job. Um, when this occurred, he had violated his um, parole or whatever he was on and because he had been uh, without a license for five years. But at that time, it was only months until he got his license back. So they made sure that they pissed him off good and, good and plenty so that he would come back and, and harm me. I mean, that's... That's almost guaranteed. So, um, obviously, you, for some reason, got tuned in to the, that sometimes men go through. I'm sure you probably had a lot of repercussions. Men are not treated fairly because of the, the let's say, the, the woman's movement sort of thing. Right, and absolutely and, not. And, and you have to understand brought, something. What brought, that, you to the, what brought you to the position of, taking a stance for the men. Policy is removing the male from the ability to protect women and children so that we can be preyed on by the matriarchy. Most people don't realize that this is a matriarchal society. This is female dykes that are running this society. Mm -hmm. Joseph Biden is a dyke. He is not a male. He might look like a male and have a penis. He is not a male. Yeah. Well, he yeah, has I, no. I, I can't, I can't he is not that. a male. Hillary sure, Clinton is sure not a female. Yeah. Hillary Clinton is not a female. She looks like a female. They made her look like a victim. The only reason she's in the position she is in now is because Bill Clinton had a great PR rep back then. That made her look like a victim. If if he's fucking around on her, she actually looks female. She's not female. Barbara Boxer is not female. Diane Be- Feinstein's not female. John Cornyn is not male. Patrick Leahy is not male. These are not these are males that are up there just the same as, as now is speaking on my behalf. These males are up there speaking on your behalf. You're the natural male. These have nothing to do with our natural biology. Those are broken individuals. Now the Violence Against Women Act does not protect me. It doesn't make me any more special. It appears to. These dyke females will take the specialty. But under the Violence Against Women Act, I can only be injured. That means put into law. If I could be assaulted, I could be harmed, and I would benefit or I would get fixed if somebody harmed me. 
However, if I'm injured, that allows generation of revenue into the attorney pocket. But there's a big difference. You can still be assaulted. Under the law, you're protected. You're not chattel. But under the law, I'm an animal. I'm a chattel. So I can only be injured. I can no longer be harmed because of the Violence Against Women Act. The minute I get assaulted or somebody attempts on my life, the prosecuting attorney gets six grand in, in federal funds. You, you, you've expressed in the past um, a series of documentation that you believe puts people outside of the corporate U.S. government and also um, establishes um, your individuality and, and your entity as, okay. as that of one being a sovereign or, or however you want to say that. Would, you know, some people have objection to the word sovereign, but I mean... To be, Absolutely. To be and and I'd like to, Well, the process is very, very simple. Uh, what you're doing is getting out of commerce. I, I need to correct something right now because I did also receive that, that email from Lewis Ewing where he alleged that I am maintaining as a sovereign citizen or teaching sovereign citizens, there is no such thing as a sovereign citizen. There is a sovereign state, and that is a state that is adhering to public law under public acts. And there is a foreign nation, which is adhering to private acts and acts of commerce, and there is a citizen. There is no such thing as a sovereign citizen. A citizen always owes its allegiance to the landlord. Mm-hmm. Okay, I do not teach sovereign citizen. The Southern Law- Poverty Law Center has so many of us on the terror watch list because they're they're maintaining us as sovereign citizens. There is no okay. such thing as a sovereign citizen. No, absolutely no such thing as a sovereign citizen. And there's a, either a sovereign state or a foreign nation. Now, according to the Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution, this allows them to write or do anything they want to under private acts or acts of commerce. However, if they are, they are a foreign nation, they have no sovereignty, and they have no immunity according to their restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. And, and again, they reiterated this in 74, uh, I think it was, with the Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act. That they're without immunity. Each municipality is a foreign nation. They're no longer sovereign states because they're not adhering to the public acts. They're only only acting under uniform commercial code, which is a great big commerce, commercial act under commerce. Um, what was the next part of Oh, successes. Um, the tons of success. Uh, most of the time my, my clients are gay. Um, they do not want this out because um, if you go to um, U.S. Code Title 28, jurisdiction, um, immunity, and all this, you can read it right there. They're fully indictable. It's all written. Um, they have no sovereign immunity whatsoever. They have no sovereignty as a state. Um, they're all acting injurious to the United States, which is you. You're the franchise of, of the United States. Um, I, I do post all of these cases. You can look at them. Uh, normally, you can just search whatever uh, state it is, county it is, and put in the case number. Um, the Boston Diamond, uh, they actually, that was the one they put in prison. She had pled guilty last October. Uh, I, had, I had written her indictment uh, personally because we could access the grand jury. Um, when you cannot access the grand jury, you're going to have to do a motion to show cause and prosecute the thing yourself. Um, but when we could access the grand jury, which is what we did in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, we got that indictment through. She was indicted uh, February 10th uh, last year. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, she pled guilty in October of 2011. She got eight years. She is now housed in Warren Corrections uh, there in Ohio as a predator because she was nailed for uh, kidnapping by fraud. She was holding the client family hostage by fraud using court process. So she was allowing the female that was mentally incompetent to falsely accuse my client. And so um, now, the, Melissa, she's better. She's doing a lot better. She has supervised visitation now with the child. Uh, Dad has full custody. Um, Everything is really nice. And and the child is actually doing so much better. Uh, Here at the end of the year, she actually, Meg, I was so proud of her. She got uh, student of the month twice. 
And it was so a complete turnaround from what she was having to deal with before we indicted her mother's attorney um, for doing what she was doing to her and upon that family. I hope all of you are listening very closely and, and paying very much attention. Right. And, and what you're saying about the truth, that's what happened. You know, somebody interceded into family life, into your uh, community living, and offered us consensus reality. It's so much easier and it's so much nicer to believe in the truth because it's it's not hard. It's not going to hurt our feelings. We were we were adapted, and, and when we adapted, we uh, began to view ourselves with an ego, with a super ego, with an identification. We didn't have that in our biology. And so you could offend it. You can offend an ego. You can offend a superego, and you can take away an identification. And um, going back to that doctor that had done that, uh, they took away his license. Well, then from that point on, he believes he isn't anymore. Well, yes, he is. He's still a doctor. He still has the knowledge that he had. They, what happens when they take your title, though? It makes you feel like you're no thing. And that's where feminism comes in. The female within feminism, she is taught that she is nothing. She has no thing unless she has a title. You're just a mom. You're just a nurse. You're just a teacher. Well, bullshit, you already are. Before an attorney sanctions your being, you already exist. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach. Jesus was teaching, I am. That's all you are. Before an attorney sanctions you, you already are. You exist. You are. I am. And that's what this whole system is, is running on. Title. You have to be somebody. You have to earn the right to be. You can never be. So we become um, where we're living in this consensus reality, and it, all it is is somebody is repeating something over and over and over again. Yep, that's the truth. Well, no, go look for it. Experience it in relativity. You know, look around you. When, when, you're, when the predator is telling you, the male, that you're beating all these women's heads in, look around you. Are you? No. Is your neighbor? No. Is the neighbor down the street? No. Is your cousin? No. Uncle, aunt? No. No. But I've seen my mother beat my, my, my father. Well, then what's the truth? Ah, uh, now it says, now it says, no, that's not the truth. Look around you in your own relativity. Are you being somebody's head in? No. What about your neighbors? What about your community? No, no. Well, what the hell? Even Joseph Biden himself, who implemented Violence Against Women Act, his sisters beat the hell out of him when he was little. He's a male victim of female domestic violence. Did he ever beat anybody? No. What are you paying for? You're paying for them to prey on me and to play catch and release. That guy that attempted on me, he got two months and a two-year restraining order to make sure that he was pissed off. That's why I'm underground. Because I know that he's guaranteed to kill me because... He not only violated his parole and he can't get his medical license back, but that becomes my fault within con consensus reality. Well, I, will, I would uh, inform you that there are many others on this call who are like you, who are kind of running underground. We have, I have one, one of our guests on, and I hope you don't mind, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and allow Rufus to go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> Throw in a question there. The people that are on this call, if they were to take out a piece of paper and write the word speak on that piece of paper and then set it down on the table and then tell the piece of paper to speak. Now, you probably sit there for a very, very long time for the rest of your lives, never, ever getting that piece of paper to speak. All their whole system. Everything that they perpetuate, they conspire to conduct, they engage in low-intensity conflict, they utilize conclusive presumptions affecting the protected interests, all come from a piece of paper with actors standing in to perpetuate the fraud, the larceny, the theft, the plunder, the irrigation and alienation of the assets of your estate. Now, I, I just I want to just say that. I really didn't have a question, but I just want you people to listen to Tammy. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just shut up and, 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 and let Tammy speak about this because when she gets into the flow of her 
inner inspiration. She is able to bring this forward very succinctly and, and, and very plainly. Now, some of the people on the call may not feel that she is talking correctly about this position in womanhood and, and, and women, but if you remember something, Aaron Russo talked with Nicholas Rockefeller, and Nicholas Rockefeller confessed to Aaron Russo that this whole thing about the women's movement and the national organization and get, getting all this equal rights was a ploy to bring another tax base into their system to basically plunder their assets as well, their labor, their assets, and to bring more restrictions on them and to use that as a tool to divide the families. Now, we have a mother and we have a father. How many people out there, when someone says to you the word parent, that you accept the word parent and don't say and don't correct them, excuse me, sir, I'm not a parent. I'm the father of the child. That child, I am the father of that child. I am not a parent. You have to understand that he used all these wicked words to con convolute the issue and make us you know, look like deer in the headlights. I would recommend that everybody on this call, if they don't have a Black's Law Dictionary, go rent it, go check it out of the law library. If you can afford to buy one, buy one. Go to your old bookstore and pick one up and start reading it from A to Z. James, one of the things that, that people need to realize, they need to empower themselves. The only people that are going to do this are the ones that empower themselves. Read the documents 50 times. Listen to the archives six or seven times. Take notes. Look up these words and, and make the process work for them. Work the process instead of waiting for someone to come and work the process for them. Because self motive is the is the key to us. And that's what that's what you know, that's what uh, with the teachings of Yeshua and Yahweh and Christ and everything else has taught us. We need to take responsibility for our lives. Now what they have done is they've used They've used the public fool system. They've used the television, which is a weapon of mass destruction, as well as the public fool system. And anybody on this call that has a television, I would suggest that they either donate it to, you know, a hospice house or someplace where, you know, people, that's all they have left to do, but get rid of that thing in your living room. It is nothing but a time consumer. And, and, and read. You know, I have a friend of mine who's probably read, close to 19,000 books in his life, and he's 60 years old. He, does not, he has never owned a television. He has a radio, but he only listens to it on specific nights. He puts into it, and what he gets out of it, he gets out of it. So <clears throat> that's, that's what I want to say, and I want, I want to just be quiet and let Tammy speak. Thank you. Tammy, then, now, um, back, back to you know, where you're going with all of this, and uh, your your process that you're bringing forward and you know to to help people to to truly be to be free people as we're supposed Absolutely. to be. Absolutely, uh, Tammy. Before you speak, I, I want to say something else. Um, the simplicity of the document that she has written and she's put her heart and soul in it. She's put a a spiritual divinity into these documents. And you'll notice that these documents are six or seven, ten, twenty pages long. They're one page or two pages. And when these when these words on these pages hit the people who have been engaged in this in this ongoing pattern of racketeering and defrauding everybody, know what they are. So with that, let's give Tammy the floor, and James, let's hold off on any more comments or anything, so she can go on with what what her. The thought pattern is right now, okay? I'm absolutely with you, Thomas. I 100% agree. So, tell Tammy, I'm giving you the floor now. I just, I just want you to know with full appreciation of everyone for everything that you're doing. Uh, tell us what you want us to know. All right, thank you. Um, the, you know, I, I bounce around in men's rights and father's rights, and I go through feminism, and I can't figure out why the hell, you know, where, where's the action that's that's not causing this reaction. And so finally, finally, um, we come around to uh, admitting evidence. And I look at, it's a concept called, or a doctrine called attorney work product doctrine. Okay, so here's the attorney, and they're taking all of the evidence off of court record, and they're calling it something else. Well, automatically, evidence is your word, the word of God, the truth. Okay, so when all of that evidence is taken off of the court record, what are they doing? They're just putting on another show. 
So here you are. You're told that this exhibit is there and this testimony is there and this report is there. Nothing can be seen by a judge because a judge, an actual judge under judicial canon, can only see evidence and rule accordingly. Now, under Uniform Commercial Code, a trier of fact can see facts. A fact under UCC, according to uh, Uniform Commercial Code, is it, it could be an allegation repeated more often than once. So again, with the consensus reality. So all this time, your will is not anywhere on the court record. Okay, so, so I'm wondering why. Okay, here's another reaction to an action to a, you know, uh, we, we always need to go as to um, for every cause there's an equal and opposite, or for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you see a, a reaction, you know, why aren't we going to find the action that caused the reaction? And so my life has been uh, quite interesting. So I finally get around to the evidence. We start admitting evidence on the court record, and I'll be damned if there's not a judge there. You know, I can sit in any family court in the country and without a client being there, and I can sit there for the first five minutes of the family court proceeding, and there will be a judge there. He will be introduced. He will juror. He will sit down in his little robe and everything else. But five or ten minutes later, he'll need to go get a drink or he'll need to go find a file. And when he comes back, he waves everybody down. Nobody reintroduces him. He's abandoned the bench at that time. So I, I watch this procedure over and over and over again, and I'm realizing everything is by consent. You're consenting to this. But there's no judge there. It's only a, a legal process. So here, you're consenting to being legally processed. You're the thing being processed. So we start admitting evidence on the court record, and it compels the judge to be there. And if it doesn't, I do, I do have a motion to compel judicial boundary or abjuration of the realm, which means he can be a judge or he can sign it and deny he's a judge, but I get that courthouse. And by his signature, he's giving me that courthouse. He is, he is abjuring, abjuring the realm forever. And anybody can look this up in Black's Law Dictionary again. This is all written. So we go forward. And, and from there, I'm, I'm noticing that these attorneys are playing games. Everybody knows this. You know, your, your own attorney tells you you don't have to show up to the first hearing in your family court case. And all of a sudden, that hearing happens, and your attorney calls you to apologize and say, oh, I didn't know. That was a mistake. However, you guys stipulated to this, this, and this. That's what's triggering the whole case. This is the start of four years, $150,000 that's going to go into the attorney pocket, and it's your own attorney doing this. Okay, so, so here they are. They're sweeping evidence off the court record. They're telling you that a police report is something very, very important and, and that it's truth. It never has been. Right now, I can falsely accuse you. I can call the police, and I can give the, the police officer my version, even if it's a false allegation, and he can go into court and submit his report to the court as if it's truth. It's never truth. It's still what I just said. So there's Joseph Goebbels again. What did Joseph Goebbels say? That was Hitler's propaganda minister. If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. So this is what they're creating. They're creating and maintaining consensus reality. So I go along, again, with the action-reaction thing, and... and uh, I want to know why or how they can be doing this. How, how did you lose yourself? How did you, the male, become so subjugated? How did they take away your legs? How do you accept feminism? How do you accept a lot of these laws? How the hell do you pay for me uh, to protect me under the Violence Against Women Act when there's no truth behind it? How do, you, how do you come to the conclusion that it was you who took my right to vote when an attorney told me that I couldn't vote, made it illegal, it was never you? And yet you've accepted this. So finally I come around to the separation of the spiritual and the temporal. It's an ordinance by King William I, which was William the Conqueror. And in this thing, he gives your body over to the bishop. Well, if I went to you right now and, and I opened my hands and I said, put your soul in this one and put your body in this one, you'd, you'd either laugh your ass off or you'd smack me for, for you know, asking of you such a thing. So really an ordinance is nothing unless you have some teeth behind it. And what they were doing is they were allowing you to be subjugated by psychology and, and other factors. So the first time you're separated of your spiritual and the temporal is when you're looking up into the eyes of a doctor, somebody in authority, 
right after you're born and you're having the head of your penis torn off of you without any anesthetic. And from that moment on, you're subjugated. You've experienced male genital mutilation that's been sold to your mother as a convenient thing. It's easier to clean your penis if you don't have that. What the hell? You know, so here's, here's a female chick in a trade-off. You know, I don't want to get my hands messy and allowing her son to be subjugated in that manner and have the, the head of his penis ripped off. Ripped off. They only do a little cut and then they rip it off. That is male genital mutilation. From that point on, um, if you start standing up by the time you're 12 or 13, you will be sexually abused or they will kill your mom, they'll kill your sister, whatever it takes to subjugate you and make you ask yourself, what did I do to deserve this? The minute you start doing that and believing in another protector, the word believe comes from the word be left, which means to be gone from yourself right now in this moment, um, and you start believing that you're bad. Now, uh, Jim Hopper, PhD, he's got a site up, uh, jimhopper.com, uh, and he maintains that before a, a male child is 16, one in six male children will be sexually abused. You know, you're taught to man up. Don't talk about these things. Um, don't talk amongst yourselves. Be a man. Take it like a man. Whatever. One in six of you are being sexually abused and you're not helping each other. You're allowing each other to be subjugated. And you need to start speaking about this and other, other issues that that are important to speak about and to, to deal with so that you're not in a subjugated state. One in four females are sexually abused, but they're not abused by males. They're abused by females. And that's who's abusing you as well. When you go to the 2009 report, the UN, United Nations Report on Human Trafficking, you will find in that report that the female is the main perpetrator of child sexual abuse, female sexual abuse, and male slave labor. She's been doing this for years. They know she's doing this. That is the dyke female. That is who now speaks for. And it is not the natural female. So again, you're subjugated. And they do this by the time you're 13, 12 or 13. Um, religious construct allows this as well. And um, religion has nothing to do with God. When you patronize something in exchange for protection, that is called religion. When you patronize something in exchange for protection, that is called democratic theory. When you patronize your captor in exchange for protection, that is called Stockholm Syndrome. What is the difference between the three? There isn't one. So now you've left yourself because your spiritual and temporal has been separated. Along comes the London Fire in 1666. In 1666, there was an act. It's called the Sestri Kvi Act. Those three words, Sestri means with what cause, you. Uh, K means what, well, sorry. K means what, and Vi means live. It is a motion to show cause life. At that time, they said because of the London fire, they lost all of your documentation. They had documentation like birth certificates and registrations, whatever. Since that time, they've come forward to the Bill of Rights, which is a bill in the nature of a Bill of Reviver, reviving the Sister K. Vi Act, or the motion to show cause life. So now you have the court process. The reason that you're administered is because the judge is, your, is the executor of your estate. You have been dead. You are missing. You are lost at sea since 1666 when they lost your uh, documentation. From that point on, they can administer you and hold you as prisoner of war. They are going to use you to generate revenue. Each municipality is doing this. You are codified by the International Classification of Diseases and Disorders. It's called ICD-10. It's the most current. You will find that at WHO, the World Health Organization. You will be diagnosed as an abuser. That's why you're being falsely accused. You can be diagnosed as mentally incompetent. You can be diagnosed as, as whatever. You can be diagnosed as a victim. Everything is under code. And each code is how the, your municipality or your nation is generating revenue off of your back off of your being. You produce from the, mor the moment you are born or birthed, D-E-R-T-H-E-D, into their land of hospitality, which is the hospital, to the moment you die in their hospitality, which is their hospital. There are only three forms of production. 
taxation and consumption is the first. Medicine, psychology, and death is the second. And the third is criminalization. You have to be criminalized, otherwise the GDP would be a lot lower than it is. You are falsely accused because this is policy, corporate policy, insurance policy. It has nothing to do with law. My process allows you to get your will onto court records. God's will has been subjugated. You are God. The only way to own God is to subjugate you and tell you that you are not. You have to be taught that there's something else, that you have to wait for something else, and you've been waiting for a long time for Jesus to come. In Latin, the word Jesus means your earth. It's G-E space S-U-I-S. This is your earth, and you are still being crucified. This is why you're codified. The person crucifying you is the same person that did back then, and it is the governor. Each governor calls out the federal states of emergency under the Federal Emergency Management Acts. You are already in a FEMA camp. Those federal emergency management acts allow the governor to call out states of emergency. If you go to your emergency rules in each one of your states, you will find that those do not apply to fixing any of the roads or clearing up flooded areas or trees or anything else for the Department of Natural Resources. They are an ability to pot you. There are states of emergencies to put you in an institution. There are states of emergencies that will build another prison. There are states of emergencies to redefine uh, mental health diagnosis or medical diagnosis. But under no circumstance are there federal emergency management funds to actually fix something like a, uh, a hole in the road or, or something like that. Now, the Sustitutive I Act asks you to prove that you are living. You have to prove it's a motion to show cause life. So what I've, I've implemented at this time is admission statements, again, back to the evidence. When you admit onto court record or record that you are living, the Sister Kivaya kicks in. Article 4 says what happens when you are no longer dead and that you have proven life. Article 4, let me get to that. The first part of Article 4 says, provided always that if any person or persons or persons, three times the word person, all with lowercase p's on them, shall be evicted out of any lands or tenements by virtue of this act, and afterwards, if such person or persons upon whose lives or lives such as states or states depend, shall return again from beyond the seas, or shall, on um, proof in any action to be brought for recovery of the same, to be made appear to be living or to have been living at the time of this eviction, that then and from thenceforth the tenant or lessee who is outed of the same his or her, their executors, administrators, or assignees shall or may reenter, repossess, have, hold, and enjoy the said lands or tenements in his or their former estate for and during the life of the lives for so long term as the said person or persons upon whose lives or lives the said estate or estates depend shall be living and also shall upon action or actions to be brought by him or them against the lessers, reversioners, or tenants in possession of other persons respectively, which since the time of the said eviction receive the profits of the said lands or tenements Recover for damages, the full profits of the revisioners, tenants, or other persons who have, who after the said eviction received the profits of the said lands or tenements, or any of them respectively, as well in the case when the said person or persons upon whose lives or lives such a state or estates did depend, or are or shall be dead at the time of bringing that said action or action as if the said person or persons were then living. What that means is that not only can you prove that you're alive, you can also bring forth an action proving that your mother or your father who's dead now was alive at the time that they did, that they did pass away. This allows you to seek means, profits, and interests according to the Zestra K. By Act. Just one moment, please. Sorry. That, that's uh, okay. 
Tammy, Tammy, I, I just wanted to, to, to uh, back something up here. Um, when you talked about the lease source, uh, it's pretty evident that there is a lease going on because they're utilizing that title for all their transactions, for the underwriting of the debt, and the continued expansion under public policy and the, under bankruptcy rules. Um, Absolutely, and, so and the last one, the last lease that was signed was signed by Roosevelt and Churchill. It was called the Master Lend Lease Agreement. Yep. Yep. Just be, okay. Just before the Atlantic Charter. Yeah, I just wanted to, sh to share that with you. I'll be quiet now and let you continue. Thank you. Okay. So once you come forward as being alive, you you don't know this, but you've been using the Crown title for a very long time. Your last name belongs to the Crown, and when you're born, birthed, or docked, your mother assigns you as a share of stock in the United States. So you become a franchise. You are one share of stock in the United States Incorporated. And by doing so, by using that name, you're using somebody else's property. They're always going to administer you. And that what they're doing is they're posting. Each time you receive any mail to your home, and you take it out of that box, and if it says the first, middle, and last name on it, you're assuming a fictional title, so you're a felon. According to uh, Title Eight, uh, mail frauds and swindles, you're you're assuming a fictional name that doesn't belong to you. So you're a felon. Each and every single time that you take any mail out of that box with that name on it, each and every time you assume that title. So when you're stopped by corporate law enforcement officials or or corporate thugs. And they ask for your driver's license or other identification, and you whip out this thing that identifies you as a fiction. You're a felon. You're, they, they have the right to arrest you. They have the right to take you anywhere because you're using Crown property. That is not your property. That belongs to the United States Incorporated. So what happened was, um, and this this isn't my baby, this is Kurt's baby, and I only helped him with some of the spellings and, and a couple words that were wrong. Um, it, it's called the Notice of Absolute Forgiveness and Discharge for other, Forever of All Known and Unknown Estate Debts, Duties, Claims, and Liabilities. When you're born and your mother assigns you as a share of stock, an assignment when you're, when you're in consideration of... Uh, trading and negotiating uh, negotiable instruments, you assign it and somebody can come in and claim it. You know, at that point, you're an abandoned child. You have been abandoned and your father's to come and claim you. Now, he doesn't know that, right? I mean, a lot of people on this call are, are dads. Um, they didn't know that uh, by announcing the birth of their baby uh, that mom was abandoning that child and so he never claimed the child. The United States did, and they gave that child a, law, a legal name. On that birth certificate, you are never alive, live, as in L-I-V-E, or be living. You are alive, which means away from life. So you're still lost at sea. Each and every child that's had a, a birth announcement since uh, 1932, 33. Tammy, Tammy, real quick, that's why they say a certificate of live birth or a standard okay. form certificate of live birth because right. they avert those two words, of and birth, negate the fact that right. you are living and breathing. Right, and, it, and you can't be. I mean, they could not administer you. They cannot administer you. Um, they cannot execute your estate if you are living because you're no longer dead. Um, at that time, Dad never comes in to, to uh, claim you in any way, so the United States Incorporated allows your legal name. That's a fiction. You need to forgive yourself. You are the debtor, and you are the creditor. You happen to be the one that they're protecting, so you're asking for this protection, creating the debt, and you're the creditor as well. So what Jesus said about forgiving financial obligations was absolutely correct. And he also stated something else, that in the end times, everybody's going to be confused. And for years, you know, I, I love the Bible. I, I only walk according to the Word of God. Um, 
for years I would read that and I would, oh man, it's going to be so scary. My my mind is going to go, you know, wishy-washy. No. And Latin, confused, means with fusion. And so when you merge the debtor and the creditor, you zero everything out. There's no more debt. There's there's There was a plus one, there's minus one. Um, you're a dead thing. You can be administered. What happens when you merge that and you forgive that debt as a creditor? There's no more debt because you're the one asking for it. You're the underwriter. You are the guarantee. Um, all of this is available. Uh, you might want to read the treatise on guarantee insurance, the treatise on mortgage law, hypothecation, and pledges, um, the treatise on the law of infants. Uh, we're always infants. We're always in need of protection because we're never alive. We we're not here. Um, the sixth thing is is the word independence. You're always pending. You're always pending. You never are. You're just in a limbo. Um, and so tomorrow, uh, I beg of everybody not to celebrate Independence Day because that's that's where you you are stuck in a pending state. It has nothing to do with liberty. Uh, what you want, you do not want to be released. You want to be discharged. Um, and set at liberty. You never want to uh, facilitate independence because it's a pending state and that's not a natural state of being um, such as I am. When you forgive um, and discharge forever all known and unknown estate debts, duties, claims, and liabilities, you're coming in and you're claiming your rightful name, which is I am. The other one, um, you can use your proper name according to Black's Law Dictionary as your first and middle name. That is the only thing that belongs to you. The last name was created by the Crown years ago. It was a description to describe what we do. Um, my maiden name uh, is Eric's son, and that just showed or, or described whose child that was. Um, a lot of people have the last name Smith, but you are as a blacksmith. You know, that, that's Crown property. Uh, that doesn't belong to us. And that is the fiction. But the fiction is not your first and middle name. It is your proper name, uh, which is your first and middle name. Um, and again, uh, if you go to Title 18, uh, USC, uh, mail frauds uh, and swindles, you will find that you are being held as a felon all this time. Now, when you come in as I am, uh, they can no longer administer your estate because you're a living being. You're no longer dead. Uh, that estate already has uh, somebody there to administer for it. And that's where we've come up with the uh, notice of appointment to the office of the executor. If you have to enter into the sea of commerce, uh, you might as well take the highest offense in the land, right? You already know that you're king. You already know that you're God. You need to be able to administer uh, to that estate that created name because, of course, you have electric bills, you have um, telephone communications, you have um, Social Security benefits that are due you. And so when you go in to um, ask for these things for you, the state, you do that in the executive office. And when they deny you Social Security, you go in with the summary judgment and just um, get it yourself because the judge can no longer administer your estate. You are. So you become the judge. Um, the legislative body and the executive branch uh, all in one fell swoop. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, Tammy, uh, this is Thomas again. Um, yeah, the the it's evident that they violated the separation of powers, and they've also violated the. Um, uh, I just went blank, but anyway. Uh, one of the gentlemen, uh, Greg Slaughter, who's been on Talk Show, talked about the fact that when a party does a common law process in regards to a ticket, uh, his website, I believe, is called TicketPlayer.com, which he, he claims, and I believe he does have, uh, I will believe that, that he has about an 85% national average. On, and on California, I did say on California, he's got about a 92% success rate. So now that process is involving utilizing an affidavit to put into the record and everything else. Now one here has done that on a case, and one was not familiar with the uh, specific documentation and the, and the concepts of larceny by extortion, larceny by fraud, 
larceny by criminal contempt, by et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. when one was in, when one was on the court, uh, on the room, um, uh, the 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 woman up there who was pretending to be some in some type of position over me, the live man, uh, basically just disregarded everything. And what was very interesting was at the beginning of it, I said, for and on the record, I want to state this for the record, that I come in peace, uh, I accept your oath of office, I acknowledge your oath of office, um, I ask you not to be a concealer, and I want you to acknowledge that on the, on the record. And she sort of like skimmed up there on the thing and tried to write, get right to the, right to the point. So um, there's a lot of things. I, one here has done many, many, many things. Uh, researched almost everything that I've been blessed with having brought in front of my eyes and, and had a complete determination and tenacity to learn it inside and out, upside down, backwards through a mirror. Now, when I've, when I've been reading these documents and the simplicity of them, but also to the impact of the words is phenomenal. And what, what I observe here is that the people are going to start wanting to run for the hills who have been com com uh, committing all this larceny upon everybody in this country. There's obviously, there's no way that you know, this call could accommodate you know, a million people or everything else. So one of the things that I think is really important is that people get a really sound foundation into what these documents are. There's five documents. I believe it's a total of nine or ten pages. And one would recommend that everybody that has those documents Get a law, Black's Law Dictionary either on, on the Internet uh, or you know, from wherever, and you go over each word that you don't know in there and you write out the definition of it. And cause the, the, I feel that this will be the gateway for them to have the light opened up in their, in their heart and in their head and in their level of understanding what these documents do will ab enable them to have more power than they've ever dreamed of. And with, it's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's through discipline and due diligence to, to learn this stuff. But I think that's a very, very good foundational spot to get going with. You don't have, you know, 20,000 words. There's probably maybe 1,600 words on those, on those five documents. I just wanted to state that. And I do have some questions, but I would like to do is just go quiet and let some other people ask some questions. And so I will go ahead and do that and let James bring up uh, people who have been waiting to ask you very important questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So what we've also noticed is that they've hidden the grand jury. And we're all screaming for the grand jury. We've been screaming for the grand jury. We've been trying to adapt. We've been trying to uh, facilitate a grand jury or, or some semblance of grand jury. We've been going under statutory law under the 1789 Judiciary Act, which is all still under commerce, still under private acts. Um, and, and it's not going to go anywhere. And so we just cut to the chase. Motion to show cause, whatever they're doing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. If Walmart is arresting you for no reason, these are corporations. If Walmart is arresting you, the living being, now that you brought forth your life, well, then that's kidnapping. And it will always be kidnapping. This is man-stealing. So you're going to do a motion to show cause, man-stealing or kidnapping, and you're going to say why. The most common occurrence right now is largely um, a property lost, mislaid, or delivered by mistake. Now, everybody's going through a foreclosure. Um, some people are going through um, the case that we refer to in the Jonathan documents is um, it was an adversary complaint on an ancient occupation. So you have an insurance agent, Crosby, who comes in and he says, well, I built a deer blind on, on Phil's property, so it should be mine now. And I, I laugh about this because where the hell did he come up with that idea? I mean, these, these are statutory laws on the books. Um, however, that's still larceny of lost, property lost, mislaid, or delivered by mistake. And so when the judge facilitates this as an administrator, in an administrative capacity, and I'm looking at this, and, and Crosby, he owns State Farm Insurance Company. Now, what's above the law? Insurance and attorneys. So, So here you have a whole um, conglomeration of Northern Trust Holdings and Northern Holdings and Trust, which is, you know it as the IRS. Um, we can get into this another time, but um, this uh, 
Northern Holdings and Trust, you've got it over insurance. You have it over title uh, company, it's title insurance. It's all a scam. It's all a scam. Every, everything's run by the Freemasons, the Illuminati. Absolutely. And, 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 and it's and not... It's, it's, right. it's just like the Matrix where people still think that there's three branches of government that, that run this country and that that votes count and that you can vote people in and out. That's a lie. All our our elections are rigged. It's just that's what an election is. Nonsense. Right, an election is you have a um, the electoral college. You no, have no, the I'm electoral even that franchise. That is bull crap. I'm saying right. even it, that it, is bull crap. They absolutely. They just, it has nothing to do with voting. You have the same. Uh, individuals implicating false allegations and taking you through a legal process, they're sitting there. It's an electoral franchise. So whoever has the most money is, is getting your vote, is speaking your word. And, and this is where you come in with the attorney. What does he do? He represents you. This is representing the word of God. And you've been allowing it's this. Just, you've been sitting there. This attorney, he'll represent the word of God, and he'll plea upon the court. He will pray to that judge. That's Marduk sitting up there. They worship Marduk. That was Baalism. Now you know it is Baal, but it's still the same piracy. The exact same piracy. And that's what feminism, masculinism, Zionism, Islamism, Catholicism, Judaism, all these isms. No, the no, you got, you got one wrong. The Catholic faith is not included in that. Some type of ism. Any religious belief, and and Catholicism is is a word you can go look it up. Um, what it does is it reserves rights superior to one sect over another, and when that happens, it diminishes your rights. So within feminism, for example, the female's rights are superior to yours. So if if you and I were married and we get a divorce, I will have full custody of our child. Why is this? Well, your rights have been diminished. So, according to piracy, your rights were just stolen. Now, you get to go into court and buy your rights back. So, if somebody's interceded in between you being a parent and a father, right? So, here they are. The pirates stole your rights by reserving mine. And it's the same thing with Islamism, Zionism, Catholicism, Judaism, environmentalism, no, nobody, Marxism, individualism. Nobody, nobody takes your rights. In the Catholic faith, in the Catholic faith, you actually become free from sin so that you can live a righteous and holy life. So there is no, uh, nothing, uh, you know, that's I'm not saying that the church is perfect, it's far from perfect, but it is the spotless bride of Christ, and it is the mystical body of Christ, and it is the pillar and foundation of truth, and it is um, the uh, that man is delusional. No, no, no. He's he's okay. Um, to the caller that was just on, I urge you to go look up Westminster Statutes, which comes right from the Westminster. Um, church, the Catholic Church, um, when King William the I separated the spiritual and the temporal, he gave your body over to the bishop so that the bishop could pray on that. And they separated the two, the Lord's spiritual and the Lord's temporal. I invite you and I oh. urge you to go over to the House of Lords, the oh. House of Lords in England, which is the UK legislature. And just look at it. Look at the financial there's no documents. Way that, there's no way that a person can separate the soul from a body unless you're you're killed, okay? Unless you're traumatized. Unless you're traumatized. No, unless you die. There's, there's only one way for the soul to leave the body. You have to die. That's, that's you have it. to be traumatized. And what happens is the no. bishop then is allowed to prey trauma. on you and rape you. No, they're no, allowed trauma. to traumatize you by killing trauma your parents. 
trauma doesn't cause your soul to leave your body. It may, it, trauma may, uh, you know, leave like painful. Your soul. Uh, okay, just one moment. Let me let me speak on this for one moment, please. Um, what happens when you are unable to find yourself? Okay, you become a vessel. You become an empty vessel. And that's what the Sestri Kibayak determined. You're lost at sea. You're an empty vessel. Now, when you look at a glass, you can, you can look at any of your drinking glasses. If you fill up a drinking glass with water, your drinking glass, your drinking glass consists now of water. Okay? So right. water is the glass's constitution. Okay, so... So it's, if you're no, an empty it's vessel, con, it's its content. I mean, it's, it's not. its constitution. It consists of water. You agreed with me a moment ago until you realized what a constitution was, didn't you? And I know it's hard to accept. I, I went through the same thing. No, things. no, I, and I'm at not, first, it, you know, at first, I felt you're you're talking nonsense. You're, you're talking about how a body can be separated from its soul without uh, death happening, I mean, you're talking Absolutely. about... Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that, when, that's nonsense. When you're traumatized, when you're that's traumatized totally in any way, I know it's against all of that you've been taught before, but we were okay. all indoctrinated okay. before. Okay, we've all been traumatized. So you're saying that Absolutely. we don't have souls anymore? You're saying that what the, the animating... Uh, that animating portion of my in my body that that animates my body is gone because I've been through trauma because I went through two wars in Iraq. Okay, so I I experienced trauma. You're saying that now Absolutely. I don't have a soul. Now I don't have no, a no, soul. No, no, no. You, okay, you're well, where's being my held soul? By somebody then? else. No, where's my soul? I'm telling you. I mean. If I, okay. if I if I went to war in Iraq and I and I observed trauma, I I, I mean I I saw a lot of terrible things. Went through trauma. Absolutely. Then Absolutely. my my soul never left my body the whole time I was there. It stayed well, exactly no. where it's right. at inside my right. body, and hey, I didn't you... die over there. So so my hey, soul no. never left. So you can't okay, say that when... trauma. Trauma okay, causes please. a soul to to leave okay. your body. That's okay. Nonsense. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Okay. Now, what, when you went and joined the military, why did you join the military? <laughs> well, I was fooled by nine eleven at the time, and and I had just got out of high school, and I thought that. You know, it, it was an honorable thing to do, you know, I, 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 whatever. So. Patriotic? Was it patriotic? I don't know. I mean... Thank you. You were being patriotic, you. right? I don't know if I was being patriotic. I just, you know, thought that... I, I thought that the country was attacked and the... You know, we were, um, you know, it was right before the Iraq War. I was pretty sure we were going to war with Iraq, and I didn't really have, a, like, a huge opinion on Iraq at the time. But, but I, I mean, I thought that Afghanistan was somewhat, um, you know, justified or whatever because I believed in Obama bin Laden, but, uh, you know... Uh, now I know the, the most truth. Part, I know the and truth. The most, and, absolutely. But, but and for the most part, it was patriotism. You know, and, yeah, and, but, right, yeah, but, were your mom, were your mother and father divorced? Were you raised by a single mom? Uh, yeah. Right. So your patriotism, when you shifted your patriotism and you accepted another father... Something made you do that. It was a reaction for you to do that and accept another father to patronize something else. No, that's not that's, true, actually. That's because when you lost your I, soul. I didn't, See, no, I so didn't You were empty, lose my, and you, need, I didn't you needed another father. No, I didn't lose my soul, okay? And I didn't... 
and I wasn't looking for a father figure, all right? I mean, in my soul stayed in my body the whole time, before, during, and after the time I was in the Army. You're, you're, you're talking New Age weird nonsense that goes against the natural law, it goes against... No, indoctrination. Uh, it goes yes. against indoctrination. Sir, can no, I, I make a statement real quick? Sir, did you join the infantry? I joined as, as a scout. Would that be considered, sir, as a member of the infantry? No, it would be as a member of the cavalry scout. So then you went into Iraq and Afghanistan on horseback then? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful here, sir, but... You no, know, you you need to understand that a, ca- a cavalry scout does hail, like, in its history on horses, but modern warfare has gone past horses for the most part, and they trained you on... Bradleys and Humvees, and those are what you ride on now as scouts. Okay. So, well, the, every conflict so, since the Revolutionary War on America has been designed prior to the ever first shot ever being fired. It's well documented. It's done by the Freemasons. So was the French Revolution. It right. was designed by the Freemasons. I know that. And, sure. they, and, and it was to destroy the Catholic Church. You can read the Illuminati's papers. They say in them, we will conspire only against Rome. That's what they made the United States for. That's why they caused the French Revolution, so that they could, they wanted to get rid of the Catholic faith from the world. That's the right. And here you were, when you, you were raised, when you were raised by a single mother, and Sir, you became but, patriotic too. The United States is a replacement father, and then the Catholic Church, you have a replacement no. father. But what no. does Jesus say? What does Jesus say about having other fathers? Uh, well, I'll tell you what Paul said. Paul said, I have, came, I have came to you as a father, or I have became to you as a father. Okay. And what did Jesus so, say? So... Uh, Paul, okay. What did Jesus say? Was Paul was equally, sitting on the Council Paul of was, Nicaea. Paul, Paul was, no, Paul was not around during the Council of Nicaea. Okay, Paul died on around, to, around, the, uh, around the year, yes. uh, I think it was 70 this is, to 80. Right, this is what 70. you've been indoctrinated with. No, I'm telling you, Paul the Apostle, all right, he was not r- around during the Council of Nicaea, and the twelve he, apostles he were said, all on the Council of Nicaea. Said, no, he said in his epistle that I have become a father to you in Christ. Okay, so he was he was letting them know that. <laughs> and what he, did Jesus he say? Their, did he say that? He was their did he say that father. God is not the God of the dead, but is the God of the living? Right, and Paul is okay. living. Paul and is have more no, alive than and have no Paul other is more alive than you. Paul is more alive than you, and you know he gave uh, Peter the title um, of rock. Okay, and then obviously we know that uh, Peter had unfailing faith according to Christ, and. Are you aware that yeah. the Ecumenical Council is the General Council today? The Ecumenical Council just means uh, the general. It's, in, a, in, it's a synonym it for means, General Council. It just means, and it's the, the council bishops, that's appropriating your means, property. It just means the bishops in union with with the the Bishop of Rome come together and uh, discuss. Pressing issues in the church, and and ultimately the pope uh, comes to the decision about what um, about what right what I, I should, against should, the human being. I should I should say anti pope because I really truly don't believe we've had a real pope since the death of Pope Pius the Twelfth. I think I think we've had Freemasonic anti popes who started the Second Vatican Council and uh, started
heard of all the problems. I don't mean to interrupt, sir, but, uh, but um, we really need to be moving on. A lot of people have other questions, too, as well. The question for the man that I would respectfully request that he answer is if he thinks that what her position is and what her 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 beliefs are, then why and what reason did he come to this call to f try and find out something, or was it just an argumentative adverse position? Because obviously if someone's going to come on this call, they should have an open mind to what the teachings are and what the documents actually really mean and and what they what their purpose is for and what they present. I'm it's sorry, very what? hard on people who have been taught to be patriotic to their fathers. It's hard for them to divest themselves of those possessions, and that's what Jesus was maintaining. It's very, very almost, hard I to almost, walk away from those fathers. Yeah, I almost equate this when Neos, or when, when Morpheus holds up the battery and says, you're nothing more than one of these, and, and Neo goes into this thing where he wants out of the concept, and he's got to throw up, and he's got, you know, he's told to breathe, breathe, breathe. In order for him to to not look, I'm just I came in here okay to try to hear sane people talk about things that are real okay are objectively true okay not to have some bullshit lie uh, about how your soul separates from your body anytime you receive trauma okay that's uh, that is. That, I would request I invite you again. to read the I, I ordinance that, of that, William that goes One. Against, I request you that goes against, against uh, sir. Yeah, the animating the animating portion of your body stays in your body until you're dead. Okay, that's that's a fact. That's not up for debate. I mean, that's it's a fact. Okay, thank who, you, sir. Who is, who I mean, you who, can, who is speaking? Who is now, the gentleman is speaking now, and where are you from? I'm from Michigan. So tell me, with that, uh, go ahead, go ahead where you was, where were you left off there? You remember where you were at? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, then just take off from where. Well, are, are you a, are you like a new age guru that's trying to teach people new age concepts to? To enlighten people to uh, to a greater level of consciousness, is, that, is this what this this room is about? Because if it is, then I, I don't want any part of it. Because I, well, I sir, think if that you were listening to what she was saying, she was discussing what William the Conqueror placed onto a piece of paper. That's what William the Conqueror stated on a piece of paper. And in the ordinance... is the body from the soul. That's what William the Conqueror said. That's what she's discussing he put on paper. And this is written. You can go to Avalon.com or Yale's Law Library, and you can search the William the First separation of the spiritual and the temporal, and it's all written. It's not very long. It's about two paragraphs. Um, it is an ordinance to ordain that your body and your spirit will be separated. Um, and now you can see this in the House of Lords in London. Um, this is the UK legislature. And you will find that there's the Lord's spiritual and the Lord's temporal. And the ecclesiastical, that means the one that's holding your body or the estate of man in, as shadow. And the, everything is written I'm not New Age anything. All I speak is the truth. Thank you, Timothy James. She is describing an historical fact. Something that was done, whether it was correct or not, simply was done and now is a part of what we have to deal with. Correct. And now all we need to do is put the soul back into the body. And to do that, we claim that we're alive. All you have to do is put on evidence that you're a live, living being. Be living. Um, when you... That's it. You claim your authority. You are Jesus. The word Jesus in Latin is G-E space S-U-I-S. That means your earth. You are the 
earth that has been crucified forever and ever and ever and ever by the same governor, by the same priests, by the same elders. These are corporations that are crucifying you, Jesus. All you have to do is put the soul back and, and realize that you are the Father. That's why Jesus was teaching, have no other father above you. Have no other father. You're the father. And that's why I was asking you to go backwards. And, and I asked you if you were from a single mom. You were from abandonment. That, that's the creation of Cain and Abel. You know, uh, Cain and Abel, they were abandoned. Cain was abandoned. So what happens? Oh, he consumed his brother. He wanted to keep him with him forever because of that abandon, abandonment. You know, these are creations a, of the system. It's not a matter of uh, what the ultimate nature of reality is or the nature of spirituality is, but rather dealing with what they perpetrated upon us. Right. Correct. Many thanks for stating it so eloquently. And it's yeah. never been God doing this. It's always been the landlord. If you go back and read Genesis now all the way through to Revelation, you'll find that there's a complete and utter delineation between God, the mention of God, and what the landlord has been implicating of the Lord God. In 1 Corinthians 6, Jesus goes off on, on this and delineates uh, further, and he says, you have, God has raised the Lord up, and so shall he raise up his up us up as well. What you've done is you've delegated your authority to another father. You have allowed this. You have called something else a father when you're the father. And the female happened to go with a greater ease. You know, it's not easy for her to walk in truth. It's easier for her to walk in consensus reality. And so she 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 accepted that other father. The law is her other father. And what we have to do now is we have to accept the truth, live in the truth only. And it is hard. It's not easy. You know, we live in a society where, where we have convenience stores all over, but these are our FEMA camps. Convenience allows us to be in FEMA camps. They don't have to be oh. box cars or, or anything else. I don't know what we're doing here. Uh-huh. Um, is there, are, are we talking about two different Jesus? Is there two different ones? Or is it just one? Just one. And it's always been you. It's the same. It's a metaphor for your crucifixion. You're being falsely accused. You're being put on a cross and the burden is wrapped around your neck. You've got always, 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 because you've been vilified under, under feminism, you've got a crown of thorns on your head to get past. Okay, so this Jesus that they talk about in the Bible that was hung on a cross... Is that you're, you're still what? being you, you're still wearing the cross. You're still being crucified. But, but, this is but, your but earth. The way the way I read the Bible there's, is that there's only Jesus, one Jesus. There's only one Jesus. The, the way okay, I and read not it, all of us are Jesus. <laughs> he lived once for thirty three years and then he went to the Father, to the right hand of the Father, to where he reigns eternally. Okay, he's not, he, and he's going to come back. We're not all Jesus. Right, you're waiting, that, you're waiting you're, for somebody to come save you instead of self-governing. No, no, and, and you're, doing this you're a new allowed age, you to be a you're a new age heretic and a liar and a deceiver. May I speak? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I think that everybody gets raised with a whole set of, uh, of uh, beliefs, and they get indoctrinated, indoctrinated with those beliefs, inculcated with those beliefs, and they then interpret their reality that they see around them based upon those beliefs. There's no basis in reality whether or not those, whether or not those beliefs happen to be true or not true. I think what we're dealing with here is, is how the myth has been perpetrated upon us and how we have to then deal with it. So right, it appears to me that the that the the Bible is actually misleading people, and into having them believe that some man died on the cross for Absolutely their sins. Not. Absolutely no, not. Absolutely not. It's, the, it's, know, it's not all written. No, the no, truth is all, all there. It's you've had it interpreted. Absolutely. You've had it interpreted for you by priests exactly. and others. But you need you need to read it yourself. Exactly. You everybody must, everybody must realize. You. Everybody must realize that the Bible was controlled by the Catholic priests for a very long time. It was altered by the Catholic priests for a very long time. 
Uh, if you wish to look for the truth, you have to look within yourself. And in a very judicious, studied interpretation of the Bible, bearing in mind that a lot of it has been changed from what it was originally. Absolutely, and I invite everybody to read, try to read Wycliffe um, and compare it to the King James Version. Uh, do comparative study. Do comparative religious studies. Um, when you read the Bible as it's written, it's called the Quran as well. If you learn Aramaic or Arabic, you'll be surprised at, about what is written in the Quran. Um, everybody's been taught to believe the media and everything else about this holy war. It's the same thing that's, that's um, reiterated in the Bible. The put on the whole armor of God and stand up for the truth. You know, there are so many different versions of the same text. And nobody's getting together because that is Babylonian theory. You're never supposed to be together. You're never supposed to discuss these things. You're, you're, you'll always call me a heretic because I discuss these things and I go across religious beliefs.